Eagles Entertainment. Welcome, Eagles, everywhere to the Eagles Insider Podcast, presented by Lincoln Financial Group. Eagles Insider Dave Spadaro with you here at the Novacare Complex on this Wednesday. The Eagles going through another practice, a good one today. And we've got a great show for you, great podcast. A bit later in the show, I had a chance today at practice to catch up with Merrill Reese, who has the broadcast plans in place for the radio this year. We all are going to listen to Merrill, right? So where is he going to be? What's the setup going to be like? And then, of course, Merrill will offer some opinions on what he thinks about the Philadelphia Eagles. And we'll meet Will Parks, who is a personality, a Philadelphia native, here to really help a defensive backfield that looks to be multiple. A lot of interchangeable pieces, a lot of players who are going to be on the move. So that's going to be fun. But first, we want to focus on running back Elijah Holyfield. And he's somebody that, you know, he's kind of come into a little bit of prominence here. His name's been mentioned here and there. We know the Eagles have a young backfield led by Miles Sanders and then Boston Scott and then Corey Clement. And then who exactly? Well, it could be Elijah Holyfield, a former player at the University of Georgia, signed with Carolina, spent last year on the practice squad there was signed by the Eagles off of Carolina's practice squad just in time for the playoff game. So a wild ride for Elijah Holyfield, the son of, yes, 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 the great boxer Evander Holyfield. Now, I had a chance to go one-on-one with Elijah, but before that, let's hear from head coach Doug Peterson, who has been impressed with number 33, a 215-pounder who on Wednesday in practice ripped off a sweet spinning touchdown run and is certainly making his claim to not only be on the roster, but to contribute in 2020. Here's Doug Peterson. Yeah, you know, obviously last year, um, needing, needing you know, that running back position, needing a spot need, you know, on, on practice squad and uh, being able to get him was, uh, you know, great for us. Uh, again, unfortunate not to have an offseason OTAs, but – I tell you, he's he's really uh, you know with again with the running back situation where we are and and, and Miles you know resting right now and and, and getting uh, getting healthy. It's allowed him just like AK uh, to to get more reps and, and get more time. And he's really taken advantage of his opportunity when he's when he's out there in practice and whether he's in the one one huddle or the two huddle, um, you know, making the most. He's He's improved. You know, you watch him even in his in his pass blocking drills. You know, which are tough drills to, you know, to to for players to go through because it's just one on one. But he's done a nice job there. He's done a nice job. He's carried over into the team setting, um, and and been been uh, you know been impressed with uh, with where he's at and and how he's understanding our offense. He's learning. Uh, obviously, he's asking great questions. You know, with with Deuce and and. Uh, you know, having Darren Sproles out there too has has been beneficial for all of our running backs. But uh, you know, Elijah's done a he's done a nice job for us. And now let's have a chance to meet Elijah Holyfield and the wild ride he's already experienced early in his NFL career. Well, one of the wonderful surprises of this 2020 training camp has been watching a young group of Eagles running backs coming of age in this very unusual time. One of them is joining me. Right here, I'm Eagles Insider Dave Spadaro, joined by Elijah Holyfield. Elijah, uh, do you look? Do you feel like you're playing as well as I see you playing? Uh, you know, it's it's always stuff to work on, but I I, I like the way I'm playing, and I uh, just want to continue to get better every day. Where do you think you've made your most improvement? I want to talk about last year because what a crazy ride! But it's your second NFL season. They always say that from year one to year two, you make your biggest leap. Where do you feel you've improved the most? Uh, just being way more comfortable, you know, with myself and, and within within the offense too. Uh, just really honing on the offense and knowing everything I have to do, uh, it's made it a lot easier for me. I'm li- I'm able to play a lot faster. Elijah, last year you spent the entire regular season on Carolina's practice squad. Y- Eagles get to the playoffs and then all of a sudden you're claimed by the Eagles and you're here. Can you talk about how do you find out about that stuff? What your reaction was? And then also, literally, what did you bring to Philadelphia? You probably had like one bag with a few pair of underwear and some socks. Yeah, I, exactly like that. You know, one day, one day our season was over in Carolina, and I'm about to head home to Atlanta. And then the next thing I know, I get a call saying I'm going to Philadelphia that day. So, 
and I literally literally brought a couple t shirts, a couple <laughs> some underwear, and some sweatpants. So uh, it was it was a crazy experience, but I'm happy I'm happy it happened for sure. Did you call anybody and say, hey, what's uh, what kind of offense do they run? What what why what's what's happening here? No, I actually I actually found out everything when I got up here. I didn't know a lot of didn't know much about it, anything, and uh, just got up here and you know had an open mind and tried to learn everything I could. Was that the welcome to the? This is a crazy business moment for you. Yeah, absolutely, uh, absolutely. Never, never in a million years would I have thought it, it it would go like this for sure. So, what was the offseason? Well, let's go back. You played in a playoff game. I mean, what did you know ab- about the Eagles from an X's and O's standpoint? If you had to play running back in that situation against Seattle, what would you have known? Uh, I knew I I learned a lot that week, you know, it, and it's really helped me this year because I learned so much that week. But um. I would. I think I would have been able to do do what I could. A lot of stuff. I, I it was just way over my head. So they just tried to teach me what I would need to know for that game more so. Uh, but I, I felt like I prepared myself as much as I could. What is the difference, Elijah, between running the ball in the SEC in college and being in the NFL? Um. The the difference. I would say the difference is you just have to be a lot more decisive with your with your cuts and stuff like that. Not a lot of time to mess around. You have a little bit more time, you know, in college, obviously. But uh. I would say it's, it's very similar. Just play as fast as you can, and uh, you know, and, and do what you know how to do. How instrumental has Deuce Staley been to your progress? Ah, uh, man, he's he's been so much help to me. You know, just having somebody with that experience who's played the game, who sees a lot of the stuff that you see. You know, what I'm saying, uh, and we're kind of similar. I, I find ourselves like you know thinking thinking in the same way sometimes. So uh, it, he's been so much so helpful for me. Do you feel like you've made the team? Uh, no, I don't. I don't take anything for granted. Uh, you know, I find out when they when they put that list out. That's that's when I feel. Do good. you think about it at all? Uh, I try not to. Uh, I try to just focus on getting better every day. Did you? Uh, would you have loved to have been in a preseason game or three this summer? Obviously, it's not happening. But that's such a great time for players to show themselves. Uh, yeah, more than anything, yeah, just getting just getting the opportunity to show myself. But like we've been able to, to you know, to have scrimmages and stuff like that here. So I feel like I've been I've been able to show myself, and there's going to be more opportunities for me to be able to. Elijah, your father Evander, of course, everybody knows what a great boxer, world champion he was. Did anybody from your family, including your father, did they have a chance to come up for that playoff game and watch you in person, your first NFL game? Uh, yeah, my, my whole family, my mom and my dad, was able to come for the game, so that was good. That must have been a great experience for, for the entire Holyfield family. Yeah, it definitely was. It definitely was. So what's the goal here for the rest of training camp for you? Uh, just Like I said, just to keep improving every day and, you know, to find my niche on the team and uh, helping the team whatever way I can. Awesome. Looks good out there. Great training camp so far. Keep up the good work, and we'll see you on September 13th against the Washington football team. Elijah Holyfield, thanks so much for joining me here today. Sounds good. Okay, let's go to the other side of the football now. Will Parks, Germantown High School in Philadelphia product. He comes back to Philadelphia after four years with the Denver Broncos. And he's got a lot of personality. He's got a lot of game. And he's adding to a defensive secondary that expects to really change up and confuse opposing quarterbacks this season. Will Parks, one-on-one. Hi, Eagles fans, and welcome Eagles insider Dave Spadaro with you. And time to get to know Philadelphia native and Eagles defensive back Will Parks. Will, it's good to finally see you after you have been here for several months. Uh, how is it going being a Philadelphia Eagle, being in the NovaCare complex, and being home? Uh, it's going good, man. I'm excited. Um, I was excited, you know, the first day to walk in and see the guys, see the coaches and stuff like that. But, um, you know, we practice now, you know what I mean? So I'm able to go out there on the field and run around and, and do what I love to do best, man. But it's been pretty awesome um, thus far the last two and a half weeks, just, you know, honing in the details, learning a new playbook and, uh, you know, being around guys like Swartz and uh, Elm and Tim Hawk and Dino and all those guys and, you know, just honing in the details and, and playing football, man. It's been exciting so far. I will get into the football in just a moment, but a, a couple things from your bio that really jumped out at me. The nickname Tarzan <laughs> or Mookie. You got you you it. Where do you get Mookie from? That's my that's my family nickname. Well, I mean, that's what yeah. you put in the bio. You got to oh, tell yeah. me what the, what the what the origin of Tarzan is then. Uh, so I, I guess, uh, you know, when I'm in Texas, I, I have a trainer out there named Ronnie Braxton. They call him Real Truth. Uh, Cindy was just out there with him as well, Cindy Jones. And, um, you know, I, I'm a maniac, you know, when I'm out there training, when I'm playing football. I'm, I'm joyful about it. Um, but I guess one day I had landed off a plane, and it, it took guys like two and a half hours to do a workout that he had. I landed off the plane, got there, and I did the workout in an hour and ten and ten minutes. He just looked at me and was like, bro, you Tarzan. And I was just like, all right, I'm running with it. You know what I mean? So it's awesome. 
And Mookie because... So my dad name is Pookie, so I'm guessing that's where my mom got the name Mookie from. So that's that's the origin behind that, because my dad is Pookie, I'm Mookie. You know, I'm a little version of my dad, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> so when you were in youth football in Philadelphia, your mom's on the sidelines going, come on, Mookie, my, run, Mookie! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my mom is, she's saying Mookie, and my dad actually is calling me head, because I had a big head when I was a baby. So that, like, stuck ever since then. Hey, you're, you uh, say that three safeties, all-time greats, were you kind of role model for yourself. Uh, Brian Dawkins, who we know and love the late, Sean Taylor, and Ed Reed. Um, why those guys? And then what they did versus what the safety in today's NFL is asked to do. Can you kind of explain to those who aren't as intimate with the, that knowledge the differences? Well, obviously, I think B Duck kind of started that that rover um, kind of thing. Obviously, he played great in the post, uh, played great running line of scrimmage, was a great blitzer, um, made plays on the ball, knocked out your favorite receiver if you wanted to, you know. And then you know, with with Ed Reed, you know, just being able to uh, play on teams and still start and and act like it was nothing, uh, making plays, and picks, um, taking it 107 yards back from the end zone. Um, it was one play against Peyton Manning where he just opened up this way, knew Peyton Manning was going to pump fake this way, turned around, picked it off versus uh, down in Miami, I think, for a playoff game. And, uh, and it obviously was Sean Taylor, man, just, you know, being the big old guy who just was, you know, just a beast back there. So I think just inter intertwined into obviously my game, just being able to be so versatile and being able to just hit at the same time as cover, um, and being at the same time as covering ground and stuff like that. I think that's uh, um, that's why I model those games for the people who don't know those. Y'all need to look them people up. Yeah, and I and I wonder at, at Arizona, you play the spur position. Is yep. that is that a deep center field? I and mean, what what exactly was the, the spur? The there? spur the spur was uh just just uh the nickel. The okay. spur was a nickel position, but I and I played the spur and the bandit. The bandit was the boundary um high safety, and sometimes I play free safety. They had a fast guy on the edge, but um, down in Arizona, it was just pretty matchup purposes for me. And that, that prepared you for what this NFL is all about, didn't it? Yeah, it did, man, because, I, I mean, it's, it's very few guys who can really play all around and do it at an elite level. And um, you know, that's, that's kind of what I pride myself on, just going out there and not just going out there to do it, going out there and playing at an all-time high no matter where I'm at on the field. You left Philadelphia to go to University of Arizona. You were a young man. You were a teenager. I was 17. Right. So, so you come back now. Four years in the league, you're a man now. What's different, Will Parks, from then to now? I was 17 when I left for school. I'm 26 now. Yeah. So that was that was nine years ago. I was a baby, and uh, back then, you know, I, I didn't have. I, I had a purpose, you know what I mean. I had to grow up fast back then, um, and, and I had I had to be a role model for my little brothers um, back here at home. I couldn't come back home until the job got done or the job was at the level that it is now and obviously uh, nine to ten years later um you know you gotta you gotta you got you got will parks you got tarzan you know you got all these different dudes all in one and that's kind of how i pride myself off my energy and my spirit um and my mentality now is just so different because you know i'm 26 now and I'm, I'm i'm home playing football you know what i mean so you know the radar is definitely super big now but being able to handle that and just focus on football and focus on myself um i think that's the difference now i would imagine playing at home could be a distraction. All your friends want a piece of you. How do you handle it? I'm pretty good, man. I got a group of people who understand what my job is, what my role is in life, you know what I'm saying? And and, and football is definitely my top priority, and they understand that. So when you got a group of people who, who love you and understand that, you know, it's, 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 it's night and day. That's, that shouldn't be an issue. So as a man, you come back to Philly, Will. What do you see differently about the Philadelphia scene? What how do you see the city of Philadelphia? A difficult time right now, we know. But what is Philadelphia to you now versus when you were a kid? Ah, uh, ain't nothing changed. You know, still gritty, nitty, nice when they want to be, uh, <laughs> you know, and stuff like that, man. But we all know um, Philadelphia is the best city um, out here in, in the world, um, obviously the fifth largest city. Um, there's so many different great monuments here, so, so much history. Um, obviously with the Eagles, you a rich franchise, you know, the Sixers, the Phillies, you know, the, the, the Flyers and stuff like that. Um, and just so much history here and, and, and the people, man, the people, what makes it grow, what makes it, and what makes it keep it going and going and going. So um, when you have an energy source like that, as far as the fans and, and the people that live here, it makes your job as a professional athlete here, um, not, not, not necessarily pressure, but even more challenging, but yeah, exciting. 
Okay, let's talk football here. How are you fitting into the defense? What do you see your role for 2020 being? Oh, man, I'm, I'm all over, brother. I'm, 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 I'm like a rover around here, you know what I mean? I'm, just, I'm all over, you know what I mean? So um, that's pretty much my role here. And obviously helping out on teams and stuff like that, you know, that's, that's, that's one of the biggest things, man, is just uh, being ready to just, you know, you know, not come off the field, you know, just being able to make plays, you know, whether it's on defense, whether it's on special teams, whether it's, you know, wherever it's at, wherever, I'm, wherever my job is that week, you know, I got to do it. So if Jim Schwartz has you as a positionless player and this guy, everybody's positionless. Everybody's everywhere, yes, So what, what difference, what difficulties is that for the offense? Uh, it, ma it makes it real difficult, you know what I mean? You just never know where a guy's at, you know, what's, what's his drop, if he blitzing, if he coming, if he cover, you know what I'm saying? And and you, when you can use that as your advantage as, the, as a defensive player because now you can just line up anywhere and probably shoot to the other side of the field or blitz, you know what I mean? So it's just so many different things that can happen. Will Parks, uh, that's good football stuff. One final thought here. Basketball. You describe yourself as an inspired basketball player. Oh yeah. Not a good basketball player. Not a great basketball player. Mm -hmm. Not an explosive basketball player. What does inspired basketball player mean? Like, like if they gave me about two and a half weeks, I'd give you about eighteen six and six on a good day for the Sixers. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Eighteen six and six, brother. It seems like you're having a great time in Philadelphia. Is this? Am I reading you correctly that this is a good fit for you? See my face. Yeah. It's there you a, go. That's a good fit. Yes, sir. Will Parks, thanks so much. Great to see you. Good luck in training camp the rest of the way. And let's go against Washington on September 13th. Thanks so much for joining. Appreciate you. All right, now those interviews were done indoors. Let's go outside to the practice field and catch up with the voice of the Philadelphia Eagles in his 43rd season, the greatest of all time, Merrill Reese. Okay, Merrill, uh, let's talk a little bit about the broadcast situation. And... What do we know about game days for Merrill Reese and Mike Quick? Well, on game days for the home games, we're going to be right at the stadium, right uh, in the broadcast booth. We have an expanded broadcast booth, so that we will be social distanced, but uh, we will be having a great view of the field. And for the away games, we will be in that very same booth, except looking into two 60-inch monitors. And what about the fact, Merrill, I know you love having the windows open, you love the energy from the fans, the noise. If there are no fans there, again, how will that impact you? Well, there will be fans virtually. We will have crowd noise piped into our headsets, and that will be coming, as I understand, from the NFL itself. But it's our responsibility to transmit the excitement as if it were a regular game attended by 70,000 people. Okay, so to recap, you're going to be at Lincoln Financial Field. For both games, so you'll both be at home and away. Okay. You'll be at Lincoln Financial Field for both home and away. Uh, and, and Merrill, how do you feel this is going to go? I mean, it's a new challenge for you. Well, it's a new challenge, but, uh, but you're a professional and you adapt. Uh, the players have got to adapt. I was watching golf last week, and I heard Rory McIlroy say, and he hasn't been finishing in top tens or anything, that, that he feels like he's just going through the motions. Well, you can't do that. Dustin Johnson's not just going through the motions. He's been amazing. You have to feel that every game is important and you are there to do your best job regardless of the circumstances. Okay, Merrill, we, we, we're out here at training camp. Uh, you can hear the music in the background. Your thoughts on what you've seen at this most unusual camp? It is the most unusual camp, and you, you can't come away from a hole with a whole lot when you don't see hitting a great deal of the time. But you can look at a Jalen Rager and say, Wow, he is a talent. You can look at somebody like Darius Slay and say, you know what? They finally have that shutdown corner that they've been seeking. You can look at John Hightower. Mike Quicks watches him often and says that he is a, a very, very talented player. And uh, the, the energy level is great. I mean, you can always hear Brandon Graham. You can always hear these guys. And uh, I think they're going to be fine. I think it's a good team. I think uh, there is still time left, and they've got to find some continuity in the offensive line. That is the big question mark. But right now, I think 32 teams probably have major question marks and continuity concerns. Merrill, how much do you miss the fans? Always miss the fans. They motivate me as much as the action on the field. But uh, that's, that's the circumstances with which we're all confronted right now. Merrill, do you feel like you really have a sense of what this team is? I don't think I do. After oh, oh I, I have a sense that they're a very good team, that they're a Super Bowl contender. Do they have things that they have to address? Yes. But look at the NFC East. 
you have three coaches who are new to those teams, and one, Joe Judge of the Giants, who's new to being a head coach in the NFL. Yeah. So every team in the National Football League, the Patriots, no Tom Brady. How's Cam Newton going to be? I don't know. Uh, you, you go look at the best teams in the National Football League. Look, the Kansas City Chiefs are set. They're loaded. But so is every Super Bowl champion, and there aren't that many repeat winners. That will do it for this episode of the Eagles Insider Podcast presented by Lincoln Financial Group. Thanks so much for joining, everyone. If you have an opportunity to drop us a little rating, thank you very much. That would be great. We have the details for you in the library of this podcast. We'll be back next week with more. The Eagles getting closer and closer to that September 13th opener against the Washington football team. Thanks to Peter Kelly and Ray Doyle for all of their work. And thanks to all of you for joining us here each and every week on the Eagles Insider Podcast presented by Lincoln Financial Group. Eagles fans, have yourselves a great Eagles day and fly, Eagles fly. E-A-T-L-E-S!